Travel consideration provided by... Still living with odors? Get back in there and freshen instantly with new Febreze Air Mist. Febreze's new finer mist floats longer in the air to fight even your toughest odors. So long, sticky smells and hello, amazing freshness. Discover the new Febreze scents today. Okay, everyone, our mission is complete balanced nutrition. Together, we provide nutrients to support immune, muscle, bone, and heart health. Yay! Ensure with 25 vitamins and minerals. Enter the $10,000 Nourishing Moments giveaway. Tomorrow on E.T., Gabrielle Union's Journey to 50. I had reached a breaking point. Stories from her emotional birthday trip to Africa with her husband, Dwayne Wade. Ooh, make sure to check that one out. Now, there's one last thing we want to show you before we go. Take care, everybody. Good night. I get a missed call. Happening now. Two shootings and one murder all within the same block within 24 hours. We spoke to a man who's lived here his entire life, and he says he's never seen violence like this. Another very hazy and humid day today. I'm gonna to talk about what's contributing to that haze along with triple digit heat and that heat index in just a bit. You've seen the food labels that say unsalted, sugar-free, natural. They usually cost more, but is it hype or fat? We're gonna to get to the bottom of that and should you pay more for them? The News at Five starts right now. Think about it. Within the last 24 hours, a block of the city's southeast side has seen at least two shootings. One was fatal. Now, yeah, Camelia Wada spoke to one man who has lived in the area his entire life and is asking both law enforcement and community members to do their part in keeping the neighborhood safe. A drive by shooting one day and a love triangle argument the next leaves one man dead. A recent string of shootings has the attention of Tommy Atkinson, a lifelong resident of Highland Hills and leads a neighborhood association. This beautiful, lovely neighborhood that I came up in. He lives a couple blocks away from the recent shooting. We've had a few more than normal, not tons, nothing outrageous, okay, but um, you know, when somebody's firing off guns in my neighborhood, I expect some action. Atkinson says he hopes San Antonio police and city leaders will do more to keep the community safe, like adding more patrol officers. Somehow we've allowed these punks to come in and think that they're going to pull off whatever they're going to do. And we need to send a message right back to them that you you're in the wrong place. Atkinson says there are ways to help your neighborhood out. You can join your neighborhood association. That way you can work alongside safe officers. They contribute to the movement by being a member, by being an attending member, being an officer in the organization. And that way you can watch and see what's going on and you can speak up. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. A new development in the case of a deadly dog attack. The insurance company Allstate asking the court to decide its rights and obligations related to the February mauling that killed 81-year-old Ramon Najera. A lawsuit filed on Allstate's behalf states the suspects in the case, Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider, are not the homeowners and do not have a policy for the home, so Allstate should not be liable for the damages. The couple is currently out on bond on charges of injury to the elderly and dangerous dog attack resulting in death. He's back in jail. A man who had two capital murder charges recently dismissed back in jail for that same crime. Christian Ray Belmudez arrested today for shooting the shooting deaths of Gabrielle Sanchez and Kilani McNeil. They were killed in January at a travel lodge off I-35 North. The charges dropped last week over a so-called lack of evidence. A warrant states that Belmudez admitted to being seen with the victims on surveillance cameras at a quick trip the night of the shooting. Other evidence includes Belmuda is actually seen with the victims on hotel surveillance footage that same night and video showing him leaving the hotel they were found in with a gun in each hand. Right now, Belmuda is still being booked into the Bear County Jail again. Details of his bond have not been made available. A man recovering after he was shot three times last night. This happened along Palo Alto Road near I-35. San Antonio police say the victim was returning to his vehicle from inside the store when two men went up to him, tried to rob him, and shot him three times in the torso. He was taken to the hospital and at last check is still in critical condition. The suspects got away and have not been caught yet. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. 
A woman riding her bike hospitalized after being hit by a car. This happened at 1030 last night on West Drive near West Woodlawn and I-10. Police say the woman was riding her bike when she was struck by a sedan, but the driver did stop to help. She was taken to University Hospital with minor injuries and is expected to recover. SAPD says the driver will not face any charges as of now. A man killed at an easy wash laundromat last night, now identified as 47-year-old Jermaine Watson. Right now, San Antonio police are looking for the people who killed him. They say Watson was at that easy wash on Gardendale and Data Point Drive when his girlfriend asked two men outside that business to clean up after themselves. She told officers the men slapped her twice, so she went to Watson for help. When he confronted the suspects, one of them shot and killed him. We've also learned the name of a 51-year-old man who died in a construction accident yesterday. His name is Sean Jimmy Pedragon. The 51-year-old was installing a manhole on Rogers Road in the Westover Hills area when he became trapped after the work site collapsed. We're told he died on scene. A case of what's being called jugging unfolding on the northwest side. And San Antonio police are looking for the men behind it. Jugging is when suspects rob a person who withdraws money from a bank or ATM. And it's what happened to a man this morning. San Antonio police say the victim withdrew a large amount of cash from a bank on Wurzbach Road. He then drove to his business near Hebner and Fredericksburg. That's when he was robbed. He told police he was followed by a black Lexus SUV and a man wearing a mask got out, grabbed the money bag. The man was knocked down by the vehicle while the suspects took off. SAPD is looking into the license plates on the suspect's vehicle, but at last check they have not been caught. Now, so how can you protect yourself from jugging? Be aware of your surroundings when withdrawing cash. Watch for vehicles following you out of the parking lot like that man did. Put your money into a bag other than the envelope or bag it came in. And of course, lock your doors when you get into your vehicle. Don't leave anything behind. Well, the gun violence epidemic isn't just happening here in San Antonio, but across the entire country. The Health and Human Services Secretary is warning Americans are facing a never before seen crisis that is taking innocent lives on a daily basis. CNN's Mike Valerio has the latest on how there have been almost 300 shootings in the nation in just three days. Chaos erupts during a gathering in Denver, where at least nine people were injured during a mass shooting downtown as crowds celebrated the Nuggets' historic first NBA championship win. Police say they think the shooting overnight Monday into Tuesday had nothing to do with the celebration, but likely stemmed from a drug deal turned violent. I think our strong suspicion at this point is that five or six of those were uh, completely innocent bystanders. Nearby, crime scene tape lines a Denver highway, where two people were killed in an apparent road rage shooting Tuesday afternoon. In Pittsburgh, police say a triple shooting Tuesday night has left one dead and two others hospitalized. And a seven-year-old caught in the crossfire of a drive-by shooting in Ohio in early June is now sharing details of her traumatic experience. I never got shot before. That's why I don't go outside no more. The Gun Violence Archive has recorded nearly 300 shootings across the nation in the last 72 hours. Now, federal officials are sounding the alarm on the effects of gun violence that is left across the nation. Gun violence is a health care crisis in this country. I think it is important that we take actions to protect our, our communities and our neighborhoods. We will be reinforcing the importance of identifying, investigating, and prioritizing the prosecution of those who are responsible for the greatest violence in our communities. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. ERCOT asking the state of Texas to keep an eye on the power grid as summer temps skyrocket. At last check, we're operating at good conditions with enough power to fulfill demand. But ERCOT was surprised when peak energy use came sooner than expected. They anticipated a max of 82.7 gigawatts in the middle of summer, but already in the second week of June, we're at 82.3 gigawatts. CPS Energy also telling customers to conserve power when they can and while ERCOT confirms there's enough to avoid a blackout, it's still important to monitor the risks during these hotter temperatures. Taking a look outside at Transguide 1604 at Marbach and then 1604 at FM 78 Smooth Sailing. Adam, hopefully those people are traveling somewhere cool. <laughs> 
home. Hopefully home. their uh, air conditioner. Hopefully can, the AC is working. Yeah. yeah, hopefully it's working in the cars. Otherwise, as my dad said, it's four down 360. That's your air conditioning. <laughs> Del Rio 101 now in Warren's backyard, but mostly we're in the 90s, not making the triple digits because of the low clouds really holding tight today. And of course, the very high humidity. Myco at 94 along with Windcrest, Bulverde, 91. I mentioned those clouds. Notice how early in the morning, the typical low morning clouds, we almost always have them this time of year. They really held tight all the way through the noon hour, and that limited our heating a little bit. So Castroville now at 94, officially at the airport, we're 93 degrees. The hot spots, Catula, Laredo, 103, but junction there up in the hill country at 105. Now, as we go through the evening, very sticky. We'll have some low clouds redeveloping again after midnight. I'll be back in a little bit to talk about the haze in our sky. One thing contributing to that, along with the thick humidity and when that might change in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Well, everybody check your freezers. There is an active recall for some frozen fruit sold at HEB, Costco, and Walmart. The issue is with strawberries grown in Mexico that pose a risk for hepatitis A contamination. The producer is Williamette Valley Fruit Company, sold under the brands Great Value and Raider Farms. We have the lot numbers affected, packages listed on our website, ksat.com. If you have any of the affected products, just throw them out or return them for a refund. I'm talking about shopping, you see them in the grocery stores, labels like natural, very low sodium, sugar free. What do they really mean and should you pay more for them? 12 your Sides, Marilyn Moore, it's on what to look for and what to skip. Food labels, which are helpful and which are just hype. Some food labels are regulated by the FDA, but others aren't, and they may not mean what you think they do. If you want to avoid pesticides and fertilizers, look for the USDA Organic Seal. It has stringent verification rules. Labels that say pesticide-free or zero pesticides, those are not regulated terms. If you're cutting back on salt, look for low sodium or very low sodium. Low sodium foods have 140 milligrams or less in a serving. Very low, 35 milligrams or less. No salt added or unsalted are not always sodium free. These terms just mean no salt was added during the processing. Some foods naturally contain sodium. For taming a sweet tooth, look for no added sugars or sugar free. For foods like tomato sauce and ketchup, look for no added sugars on labels, not sugar free because tomatoes naturally contain sugar. It's added sugars that you need to be mindful of. Lightly sweetened and slightly sweet are not regulated terms, but reduced sugar is. It means it has at least 25% less sugar than the comparable item. Now to the bread aisle. Calvo says count on these labels, 100% whole grain and 100% whole wheat. Products with a multi-grain or made with whole grains claims can contain refined grains. Still not sure what you're buying? Just flip it over. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A group of senators working on reintroducing a bill to stop the sale of user data to countries deemed unsafe by the U.S. We'll learn the details of this possible new legislation after the break. A team of high school seniors launching a rocket they built themselves. How they plan on breaking the previous altitude record when we come back. Tonight at 6, it's been more than one year since many Ukrainian families were forced to leave their home and relocate to San Antonio. Many are rebuilding their lives, and a free business seminar today at Geekdom is helping them get back on their feet. We'll tell you about this unique seminar that's bridging the gap for these aspiring business folks. Plus, in 2017, a San Antonio mother murdered her husband, Guadalupe Contreras, charged with the crime. Coming up, a look back at the case and why it's taken so long to get his trial date. A lot of Juneteenth events are coming up celebrating the day word finally reached the enslaved people of Texas. They were free. But to learn beyond Juneteenth should take you here to 218 Pressa. That is the San Antonio African American Museum and Community Archive. We are taking you there and telling you more about it in the 6 o'clock news. The students from Alamo Heights High School are building a rocket to get as close to space as they can. 
guess it's appropriate since they have heights in their name. The high school seniors built a 20 foot long, 300 pound rocket. They plan to shoot 50,000 feet into the air. They spent months drawing and researching their design with the help of mathematicians and engineers. Some former students are now working at NASA. They plan on shooting their rocket at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. It's where they're going to send it off. It's an opportunity only a handful of Texas high schools have a chance to do. There's eight schools across Texas that are at the level we're doing. Only three of them are actually going to be going there this year um, because this is hard to do. Since 2012, students have gone to New Mexico to launch their rockets. This year, the Alamo Heights team hoping to break the record. I hear NASA calling them very yeah, soon. Exactly. All right, five U.S. senators are reintroducing a bill to stop companies from exporting user data to foreign countries. The bipartisan bill would place the exports of U.S. data collected by social media companies under the same licensing requirements for purchasing military and advanced technology. The senators are hoping the legislation will force companies like TikTok to regulate how they handle the distribution of users' personal information. This comes as TikTok is criticized for their connection to China and the app's ban in several states. Take a live look outside right now, and Adam, obviously the haze, the cloud cover is back. Am I to understand that that, that actually helped us not get as hot today as it could have. Yes, it did help a lot. The clouds hung out uh, longer than usual, and I actually came up in, in our weather center, in our group text and everything with my own theory on, it's really long and drawn out, but I call it the rowdy relative humidity theory. <laughs> I, li I like the name. <laughs> Sounds appropriate. Yeah, a lot goes into it, evapotranspiration, all these other things. Of course, it's and the RRHT. <laughs> That's right. We've, it's not original. We've heard of that before. <laughs> It's going to be published soon. Just yeah. watch. All right. All right. Now we saw that camera shot and all the haze in the air. Just like yesterday, we have a little bit of smoke from Mexico in our air. Take a look at the graphic and there's some agricultural burning. The lower level winds are steering that smoke right up the western shore of the Gulf of Mexico and here into south and central Texas, but really not a significant amount in our air, just a little bit. It's the extra moisture in the air that really helps exacerbate it and make it look even hazier than it typically would with this amount of smoke in the air. The real deal smoke, that's still way up to the north. Canada and now getting pushed down into the upper Midwest, Dakotas, Minnesota, Nebraska, Iowa, Definitely seen and feeling that smoke from the Canadian wildfires. Closer to home, we actually have a frontal boundary still in North Texas, the same frontal boundary we've been talking about for a few days now. It stretches eastward all the way to Savannah, Georgia, and right along it, no surprise, that's the severe weather zone. These yellow boxes indicating the severe thunderstorm watches, the red boxes, the tornado watches, and already some active severe thunderstorm warnings along that frontal boundary. That's just outside of our area and it's not moving our way. We have the big blue H sitting overhead and it, overall, generally speaking, it's going to stay overhead. Yeah, it'll drift a little bit to the northwest, but it's going to be the primary influencer of our weather. 93 today, temperature is actually underperforming more, and I think it's because of the rowdy relative humidity uh, theory, but we can get into that. We need like a podcast to get into that and a lot more time, like case that explains. Anyway. 93 and that's our hottest temperature so far today at the airport in town officially hondo at 90 stinson 90 randolph 91 canyon lake 88 degrees but check out Catula at 103 del rio 100 but it is very 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 humid the humidity is through the roof because of our very high dew points and we have that wind coming off the gulf of mexico along with several other factors. But you look at the feels like temperature in Catula, feels like 118, feels like 111 in Gonzales. And look at these dew points well into the 70s, far inland away from the Gulf of Mexico. Usually it's just closer to the Gulf of Mexico this time of day. You have those high dew points. Uh, it's all of us partially because of all the soil moisture. And I do think also transpiration from the lush foliage that we have you know, contrary to last year, that then adds a little bit uh, to the humidity, kind of like the plants sweating a bit, similar to the, the corn sweat that they get in the Midwest. Anyway, that's all part of my RRHT, but <laughs> that's something else. Okay, very humid. There are some signs the afternoon dew points will drop a little bit by Friday into the weekend, but all that does is allow the temperature to rise a little bit more. So 78 degrees in the morning, 
By noon, we're 86, 100 the high here in San Antonio, Pleasanton 101, Divine 103 tomorrow, Gonzales 99, and then we're in the low 100s all the way through the weekend, topping out at about 103 by Monday and even into next week. By the way, tomorrow is our first yellow CPS Energy Peak Demand Day. So the you can go to our website, by the way, for more information on how to conserve power between 2 and 7 p.m. My number one thing, don't use the oven. Oh, yeah, well... You'll be wanting to eat cool food. <laughs> yeah, Get out the go. watermelon. Yeah, Don't be like cooking go. stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, it is a rivalry that should have never gone away, Larry. Exactly. And how Wait. appropriate that we have a Longhorn here on the yeah, Destiny to I'm, talk about this. I'm excited, this. but also scared. <laughs> right. So, according to reports, Texas versus Texas A&M football is back on once Texas joins the SEC. Plus, D'Amico Ryans is very happy for J.J. Watt. Coming up. Justin Tucker from 40 yards out for the game. It's up. The Longhorns win it. Well, that's how the last Texas, Texas A&M football showdown ended, and it appears the rivalry is coming back in big board sports. November 24, 2011 was the last time Texas and Texas A&M met on the football field, and the Horns won 27-25 thanks to a Justin Tucker walk-off field goal. Texas A&M left the Big 12 for the SEC after that season, and the two football teams haven't met since, but that's about the change. Now, Texas and Oklahoma are both leaving the Big 12 to join the SEC in 2024. According to multiple reports, each of the SEC teams will play either UT or OU in the 2024 season, and the Longhorns will play at the Aggies that season to renew that rivalry. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. J.J. Watt will be inducted into the Houston Texans Ring of Honor this coming season, and he can't wait for the day to come. Texans head coach and Watt's former teammate, D'Amico Ryans, feels J.J. is the perfect guy to add to the Ring of Honor. Outstanding, right? J.J. Watt is a is a man who represents everything that I try to instill in the players that we want in Texans. What I remember about J.J. Watt and playing with him was just his work ethic was just unmatched on the field. Right, Every practice, he brought it every practice. There wasn't a day off. He didn't take days off. He didn't relax. Like J.J. was always, it was always important to him to be the best at what he did. Right, And that it shows right and with the honor that he's receiving here. He's more... <laughs> He's a uh, he's just a phenomenal guy. JJ will enter the Ring of Honor Sunday, October the first, when the Texans host the Pittsburgh Steelers. I Did you get a jacket. Did yeah, you get I think you jacket get a jacket. With it too? Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Not just a ring. Pretty snazzy. Not just a ring, but a jacket. <laughs> I know it's a ring. Yeah. Around right. the stadium. Yes, I got I know it. That. I got it. Thanks, Steve, for explaining. <laughs> we'll be right back. Here's a case at 12 hour forecast tomorrow. Low clouds again early to start the day. 78 degrees at 7 a.m. Then the clouds start to break up by noon. 86 then we make it up to right around 100 for the high temperature. I mean, 99, 100, 101. What's a degree amongst friends? You don't really <laughs> notice the difference. It's still going to feel like it's around 107 when you factor in that high humidity. All right. It's going to be hot. We get it. Thanks for watching the news at 5. See you at 6.